because the gum arabic and maybe a bit of salt and also the granulation medium to try and get some of the um the rusty effect within the actual um roof itself and probably in the vehicles and also some salt down in the foreground for the um kind of the foliage so as usual i've muted the microphones um just to make it a bit clearer for everybody to hear and if you've got any questions as usual just shout unmute your mic and ask the question but if you can remute it again afterwards that'd be great so I'm going to make a start then if there's no questions initially. Has anybody got any? If I don't hear from anyone, then I'll just um, crack on um, and make a start. So I'm doing this on watercolour paper and it's on a block, so um, it shouldn't cockle too much, hopefully. And um, yeah, let's get started. So I haven't put any, any masking fluid. There's no um, uh, gum arabic. There's nothing on the paper apart from the drawing. Okay, that's all I've done so far. So let's start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wet the um, top section. So this top part of the, oh, who's that? come online. <laughs> um, so I'm going to wet this, just this top area. I'm going over the, over the roof line and probably come down about halfway ish just down to the top of the cars like so and then we'll just let that settle color wise i'm not going to go so blue i think i want a little bit less blue in the sky i don't want to be too in your face i'm going to go with cerulean so cerulean blue i'm just mixing some of that up and into the cerulean blue, I will put um, a little bit of the um, Englishy red, just to grey it slightly. I want it too grey. So I want a sort of soft bluish grey. Okay, and it's fairly, fairly washy as well. I don't want it too strong. So I'm just going to start off by bringing this in. Did you say you were going to put grey in it or red, Stuart? Uh, so I've put a little bit of English red into the okay. into the cerulean blue just to grey it down slightly. Okay, it's dark. Um, so I'm going to bring actually the sky colour into the those lighter panels that are in, in, in within the roof <clears throat> because they are pretty much the same tone as the as the sky. So let's continue that down a little bit more cerulean. Just a touch more cerulean in there, leaving a few little whiter bits just here and there. Okay, I'm going to give that a little spray just to move it. Okay. Might just bring a tiny bit more of the English red into that sky, just to warm it up a little bit. Not too much, just a teeny bit here and there, perhaps to indicate, I don't really want a sunset or anything like that, it's just to warm the sky up a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit more. So obviously that will link it into the the colours we're going to have within the the barn and all the rest of it. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to mop up this excess water that I've got here. Got a lot of water there. Just block that off. Good. Okay. Now I'm going to let that just settle for a moment and then I'm going to get some gum arabic so this top section still wet remember so i'm going to take a brush and i'm hoping this is going to bleed a little bit so i'm just taking the gum arabic straight from the oh, straight from the tube uh the, does the gum arabic wash out is it all right to use it on the watercolor brushes 
It is, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank it's you. It's basically what's in watercolour. So I'm going to run a bit of this into part of this roof line in the rusty panels. So, a bit there. Perhaps a bit coming down in these ones. Because what this will allow us to do, if you remember back to doing the fishing boat, is um, we'll be able to play with the paint a little bit more. Um, and hopefully get a bit more of a rusty effect going on. Oops, that's a big blob in my gum Arabic. So a bit more there. Okay. That's probably enough, maybe a little bit in the chimney. So I'm going to wash my brush off. Now, unlike the um, the other painting we did with the fishing boat, this time I'm not going to wait for the gum Arabic to dry. I'm going to actually paint into it while it's wet. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab a little bit of a small brush. <clears throat> And I'm going to start off with some um, burnt sienna. So a bit of burnt sienna. And just keeping it fairly, fairly neat. I'm actually going to just let it, just touch it to these panels and just let it creep and bleed with the with the gum arabic that's on there. Might guide it a little bit down, but I don't want to guide it too much. Another little bit coming through here. Just running that into the gum Arabic. I'm not going to make the panels totally solid because obviously we're going to paint into these a bit, but I just want to get some initial colour on here. A bit more down in this one. And obviously, if it, it bleeds into the sky, it doesn't matter too much. Um, we can actually shape it all back up again with some line as we kind of go along. Just a bit in there. A bit more underneath there. Just put a bit of yellow into it as well. So I'm trying to keep the um, the panels roughly going in the direction that they should be going in. Obviously, it's not possible to keep it a hundred percent because. The, um, the paper's wet, so it is going to move and it's going to bleed, but um, roughly in the direction we want it. So coming under there, and obviously I don't want it to be too neat because it's supposed to be an old rickety, rickety um, structure. You know, in there and then we'll get a bit more of the burnt sienna so that was the yellow more the yellow i was putting on there let's go a bit stronger burnt sienna coming down and then i've got a, a lip there and then there's some more bits here A 
don't know what they are. They must be sheets that have kind of fallen off the roof. <clears throat> Perhaps a bit coming across this canopy type structure. And then a bit of burnt sienna coming along this top edge. Hopefully it's not dried out too much yet. And then it sort of turns a corner and then it has a little bit that tucks just down at the back there. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that bleed and run and do whatever it wants to do. Now, I'm gonna take my um, pipette. I'm just gonna run a little bit of water through some of these. Again, just to get a bit of movement and um, a bit of action going on. So I'm actually going to bleed out this bottom edge. Just running some water all the way along that bottom edge. Ideally clean water. Take my big brush. Just wash out this line because I'm going to get a line there. Don't really want a line there if I can help it. I'll just take that right to the bottom just to get rid of it. So a bit more water. Just run a bit down through here. A few spots perhaps in there and hopefully they will cauliflower a little bit and give me some extra extra um, um, pieces of texture a bit more water through here <clears throat> perhaps it's up a little bit in this bar this roof this panel. <clears throat> okay, and now I need to turn, I'm just going to turn my board slightly away. And I'm just going to run a bit of water down this edge of the barn, just to bleed away some of that. Okay, just let that finish off bleeding. <clears throat> Some tissue. Just have a few little spots just on this edge. <clears throat> can't see what you're doing, Stuart, on the top there. Oh, sorry. I'm just um, bleeding some water in. So I'm just running some water into some of these edges. That's all I'm doing with this pipette. Can you see that? So let's just soak up this excess water. So I'm just going to let that dry, not dry, but dry off a little bit so that I can spin it back round again without it bleeding everywhere. Just getting rid of the water on my palette, on my um, easel. Okay, now, whilst that's still moist, 
I'm actually going to take some color and start to build in a bit of color underneath in that darker area. So I'm going to just take some cerulean blue to start off with. Fairly strong, uh, sorry, fairly thick color. I'm just going to start to um, introduce a bit of that underneath this, in this area. I'm going right to the edge because obviously it's going to bleed a bit. But I just want to get some blues and some different colors in whilst it can um, still move and bleed. Because most of this um, front area is actually going to be quite a bit darker, so it doesn't really matter if some of this colour bleeds over into some of those shapes. A bit more blue there, a bit under here. Not even entirely sure what a lot of these shapes are over this side, but we'll just make them into something interesting. So there's a wing mirror on this car. Just leave some lighter spots. Bit more colour there. They're coming, this is like the shadow that's being cast. Um, in the actual interior of the of the shed. So now I'm going to colour change it slightly. So I'm going to put a bit of, um, I don't want it to be too dull a shadow, a bit of um, crimson into that same blue. And I'm just going to drop some of this in. So it's a sort of a purplish tone. And again, this is still fairly wet, so um, we'll have to tidy all the edges and everything up afterwards. Just going to keep it nice and soft just to start off with. So there's a bit more purple through here. Try and keep a little bit of that yellow. Comes underneath there and then down. Then we're down to the car. And I can actually just start to fill in some of this down here. A bit more blue. The car actually curves over the bonnet. Oops, that's bled into it, never mind. I'll wipe that out in a second. And then we come down the step. Okay, and then we've got some shapes over this side. And that'll do. Right, so, so I'm just going to take some tissue. So I've lost my wheel hub, which is, um, where's it gone? Uh, it comes through here. So I'm just going to block some of this off. where my wheel hub is. Which is about there. And then my headlight, which is somewhere here. Let's just knock that back out. There's a little bit of light on this. Um, well, not light, but it's lighter on the detailing on the bonnet. So knock that out and on this right hand uh, left hand side we we'll just knock out the light bit of that detail on the bonnet uh, there's a few lightish 
patches on the timber so we could actually just knock a bit of that out. And perhaps lighten this up a bit more. I think it's a towel or something hanging down. That will do that. And I think that's probably enough. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wet the shape of the vehicle. I'll try and keep roughly the water within the bounds of the drawing. Um, if it goes outside a little bit, it doesn't matter, but um, I want to try and keep the shape as best I can. So just adding a bit of water over the top. Now this one comes all the way into the barn there, cuts around. <clears throat> Um, it comes down the bonnet there, all the way through the back. There's a wheel there, but I'm not actually going to worry about that. I'm just going to let that disappear. There's another wheel there. <clears throat> Obviously, the bottom of the vehicle, you want to keep it fairly abstract because that's where we're going to have all the um, the uh, different textures for the foliage and, and whatnot. So then we come across the front here and then I might even just add a few choppy marks just to break up that edge of the water to suggest the start of the foliage. Okay that will do. Right so first colour then is going to be um, uh, if I can find my brush. So I'm going to put a bit of green in here first of all. It's not a norm, you wouldn't think normally to go with green, but I, I want a sort of a viridian-y type colour. Uh, it's got a slight, a slight greenish tinge to some of the um, um, the metalwork. So I'm going to get some viridian first. And viridian is um, the really acidic type green. I'll put a little bit more yellow in there to make it a bit greener. Plenty of water, so I don't want it to be a really bright green. I just want a bit of a green tinge. And I'm just going to start to drop this in in different places. Maybe a little bit across the back and just let it bleed. Perhaps a bit on the arches. A little bit across the top, a few spots here and there, and then obviously we've got some greens going on down, down the bottom anyway, which we'll worry about later. And we go back to our um, yellowy browny colours that we used in the roof. So the burnt siennas, the yellows, these are the colours I'm using now. And I'm going to start to just drop some of these on. Again, trying to keep it roughly within the shape of the vehicle. <clears throat> it's quite green there. Let's come down on the inside of the cab. A bit more brown. I'll put a tiny bit of burnt in there, a, a bit of um, cerulean in there as well, just to dull it slightly. Just want a, ver a variation of sort of brownie, brownie type colours. So that's the back of the truck. <clears throat> Coming down, a few marks there, a bit more yellow. Side of the bonnet. Got the headlights there. <clears throat> so we're not trying to paint a really neat representation of this car. I want it to be a bit more rustic. Uh, perhaps a little spot in there. And then we've got the the bumper that sort of comes across the front. 
<clears throat> to about like so. And then there's a bit more orangey yellows down there. Okay. Now, take a bit of the, um, where's it gone? The granulation medium. I'm going to put my board flat for this tissue just to mop up some of the excess. So you want to do this while the while the paint is still wet, ideally. So take a bit of the granulation medium, and I'm just going to drop drop it into some a few places just to get the um, the paint to split and break. It's a bit along the bonnet. <clears throat> Some on the wheel arches. A little bit inside here. Okay, that's probably enough. Let's just leave that alone now. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of salt as well, just a tiny bit. I just want a little bit more reaction across the these areas. Just have a little bit of salt on there. Perhaps a tiny bit up here. I'm just going to use the salt to vignette or get it to disappear at the back here. Okay, let's leave that alone. So let's move over to the um, the vehicle now on the left, while that one's doing whatever it's going to do. So a similar idea then. Just going to re-wet the vehicle itself, <clears throat> just with water. Again, trying to keep it pretty much to the shape of the drawing, or the shape of the vehicle, I should say. <clears throat> Around the front of the bumper. The head, might leave the headlights dry. Just cutting around those. And over the wing. And then away. Okay. And then pick up some colour. So this time I'm going to put a bit of blue. A little bit of burnt sienna. Perhaps a tiny bit of cobalt into this one instead of green, just have a slight variation of colour. But on the bonnet. Just a bit on the bumper. And then I'll dive into the yellowy oranges, browny oranges. So work a bit of this in. Down the bonnet.
across the wing. <clears throat> Around, cut around the headlight. Ugh. Then we'll have a bit of that into the bumper. Might leave some of that grill light for the moment because it is fairly light. And work into that afterwards. Okay, that's probably enough. So I'm going to give this a dry off now. Um, I'm just going to block that off. So this should have gone off enough now. I'm just going to give that a quick hair dry and then I can actually start to work the foreground. Okay, so let's now move into this bottom area um, and get that done, because that's the last bit that hasn't had any attention yet. So for the bottom area, I'm actually going to load it with some water again, clean water ideally. So I'm gonna bring that all the way up the side of the, of the vehicle. bring it across the step, up a little bit into the, um, the hut, down the front of the <clears throat> left-hand vehicle, just let it creep up, up the, uh, the side of the vehicle to make it look like the grass is a sort of growing, growing up and around the, um, the metal work. I'm going to leave this middle bit a little bit drier because obviously we're going to have a pathway there. Okay, that's probably enough. So I'm going to use um, some salt on this uh, bottom section. So I'm going to make a green up first of all. And the green is going to be comprised of some cobalt blue and some uh, yellow. So like a cadmium yellow, not one that's too dull. Um, so I don't seem to have any cadmium yellow in any of my boxes. What else lemon yellow will be fine. Lemon yellow. Lemon yellow. Yeah, yeah okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so I'm putting a fair amount of yellow into it because I want it to be um, the initial colour to be fairly lemony, sort of yellowy. So let's start to drop drop this in and again i'm not going right to the edge of the wet area i'm just going to let it creep up a little bit so just tilting the board slightly away from me load the brush a bit more coming around that tire just looking to see where i've actually wet the paper probably not gone quite high enough there let that bleed away over the right hand side coming to the left hand side same again just run this in coming across need a bit more of that 
bit more yellow. All the way through. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of variation to that color. So let's take a bit more yellow and a bit of cerulean, so a slightly different blue and a slightly different yellow, maybe like a lemony yellow, just to give a bit of variation to the color. I'm gonna drop some of that in. Different places. Bring it a little bit higher up to the bumper. Let's have some of that on this left hand side. <clears throat> okay, now while that's still nice and wet, I'm going to take my salt. And I'm just going to liberally sprinkle some salt into those greens. Okay, so I can't do much more on that while that salt's wet. Oh, sorry, while the um, the wash is wet. So I need to just let that let that um, uh, go off a bit before I can hair dry. Right. So I don't want it too wet. So I'm just knocking out a little bit of the excess paint onto my tissue, and then I'm actually going to start to draw the. Um, into the barn itself. Just to get the barn to start to show up a bit better. And then we're fairly dark in there. I've got some bits of the edge of the sheeting in here. It's very dark on this edge. I'm not going to worry about all the corrugatedness. I'm just going to give it a very wonky line. So I have a bit of that there. A few marks. I don't want to line all the way across. Might even go and dip into a bit of cerulean blue as well, just as a change in the line colour. And then we've got a bit of an edge, a little bit of an edge there. And then it's pretty dark in here. There's a very dark shape there, which we'll fill in in the moment. There's a piece of panel that kind of comes up and then back down again. And then there's another bit of panel here. <clears throat> and then we're into the shadow. Underneath there. So I'm just going to drop in a bit of just a bit of water and a bit of the blue and the brown together. Just to knock in that shadow.
maybe a bit more of that shadow coming. I think it comes across and then down into the underside of this beam that comes down that way. So I'll put a bit of shadow on that, a bit more blue into those, into that burnt sienna again. So nice and strong. And then we can come a bit bluer again. In the shadow here. So we come across the front. A bit more brown. Front edge of this shape up into and leave a little hole there with some light. <clears throat> Just simplify all these shapes over this left hand side till we get to the um, the wing mirror. It sort of comes underneath there. There's a bit of the beam of the wing mirror that comes down there. Change the color slightly again, go a bit more purpley. As we're getting into the darker area of the shadow. So coming down. Again, we've got a little bit of a shape in there, a shape or two. And then we're then pretty much at the bonnet of the car. So I'll run that around there. More brown, I think. Make that a bit richer. Some shapes underneath in the shadow. <clears throat> I can dip into a tiny bit of red actually. Make it a bit brighter in here. Make that shadow warmer. So warm and cool, warm and cool, just to mix it up a bit. So that all the shadows aren't just one, one color. So we're very, very dark. under this piece of the um, corrugated. And we can come across there. A few little shapes. And then the back, the back of the, um, bit of the beam or the roof will make that very a bit bluer and that comes down then to the edge of the the truck so we'll just leave a few gaps coming in a bit stronger again more blue And I can just break into these shapes. And that comes down down that beam. Get my burnt sienna. Coming around the light. And then inside the actual structure, with the paint. 
paint grey as well in there, which is very dark. A bit of red into that. So we've got some real nice strong darks. Coming down. And then there's a few little bits of detail just inside there. More blue. <clears throat> link that side up with this side. So there's some, I'm not entirely sure what that is there. I think it must be like old engine parts or something, but um, just gonna bring some bluer shapes just down the back side of that. just to help the front of that vehicle to show up. Then back into the purpley colours. As we come down the side of this beam, there's some grasses there, much bluer now. So the edge of this um, <clears throat> side of the car. Oops. And then this step comes through. We've got little bits of detail there. Cutting underneath that bit of the bush. Pop that off. Okay, so that'll probably do the, um, the cabin for the moment. Just need to get some color then into into that right hand truck. So then with my rigger, taking the same dark colors, but with a bit more burnt sienna in it. Just gonna start to cut in, cut in here, there are what looks like Venetian blinds, but um, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to bring some shapes just to show the edge of the cab. And there's some bits of detail. Just leave a few gaps. to show that there's a bit of light coming through the the, the bits of wood that are on top. And then that sort of goes up. To this top area, a bit bluer. So we've got this piece of wood that sticks out. <clears throat> OK. 
comes down. Down there. Laying a bit bluer, a bit lighter. Go over the steering wheel because that's going to go very dark, so I don't need to worry about that. Just make all of that blue in there, or a bit bluer. Okay, now move to the front of the truck while that's drying. Dip into some Payne's grey and a bit of yellow to make a dark greeny grey. Just going to just start to get this front shape of the truck in. So it kind of comes down and then there's a bit of a base to the grill. It's there. And then we've got the wheel that sort of cuts through. And then there's the bumper. And then there's this left-hand side. Uh, and there, and then we've got the base of the, the more orangey with that. Base of the bumper that comes all the way across. Just exaggerate the rustiness a little bit more. Darken up a few of these spots where it's going to go very dark. It's a bit dark under the wheel. Try and keep it fairly abstract here where some of the green showing through. And up and over the behind the wheel and then kind of can, turns the corner and then goes away. There's a few shapes in there. So let's now come back up into this. I can actually detail this up now where it's drying a little bit better. It's not totally dry, but it's dry enough, hopefully, to start to get some shape to it. couple of little lines back there. Not too worried about this area, I'm just going to let it just disappear. A few more lines coming down for those shadows. Just suggesting the shadow cutting through. <clears throat> A nice dark shape there. Put the front of the grill in. Just 
just with a bit of a dry brush. Same colour. Okay, I'll clean my brush off. Come over to the truck on the left hand side, on this side. Just start to detail that up a bit more. So coming from the furthest wheel, putting a bit more cerulean blue into this. So up and over the archway. comes around the wheel and then it cuts in. Comes down the bumper. In to the under the grill. Comes forwards. And then it goes back on itself and then makes this sort of W shape. <laughs> so dipping into a bit more brown. Just randomize these marks a bit. A little bit lighter with some more blue. So we'll just get this grill in at the front here. few shapes on the bonnet. So down angle there, around the window frame. It kind of comes up and then it goes downhill. Sort of downhill on that side. And then inside, we can just about see the some of the inside of the um, the cabin. So we'll put that in dark, the bluer. Get my other brush for that. Just fill that shape in. And a bit over here as well. <clears throat> I'll get some of that inside cabin. Put a bit of colour through the through the wheel here. Just a light wash. Just coming down. Do the same on this wheel. Just a light wash. Just to suggest that there is a 
a wheel in there. And then back into the vehicle itself. Mix up a bit more of the browny yellow kind of colors. Tiny bit of purple in there just to sort of make it a richer brown. And then I'm gonna bring in this behind the wheel arch with a light wash, so not too strong. Just want to bring in the fact that this is on the side of the vehicle and not the front. So coming round the back of the um, the wheel hub. And it sort of comes up and then over. Maybe a bit of a beam there or something. Get this side panel in. some of this grilling. A bit more tone on the left hand grill as well. Some of this left hand awning as well. Wheel hub under the light. Let's put the wheel in on that one. Go back to my dark wash. Let's just leave a little gap between there and the and the um, bumper just so it doesn't bleed too much. <clears throat> and on the left hand vehicle, again a light wash, just to suggest the side. <coughs> so this is the side of the vehicle. Coming up that wheel arch and then we've got these darker bits at the front sort of domes back comes in kind of goes up and then this side over here is a lot darker So can block that in. There's a bit of shadow down here. Okay. 